I'm here with Dawn today and she has a 94 Ford Econoline van and we're going to install a fantastic fan for her and why are we installing a fantastic fan in your van? Because I need as much ventilation as I can. These conversion vans have small sliding windows in the back but other than the front windows which roll all the way down there's really not much circulation back here and I cannot sleep without fan. So okay, that's well, the primary reason is just so that I sleep well and so that's why we're going to put it right over my bed. And what was the deciding factor for you to choose the fantastic fan? Because I hear so much about it from other vanners and I f figure it's tried and true and so I want to go with something that that I know isn't going to fail on me and that other people are satisfied with. Makes a lot of sense. you mind sharing what you paid? It's a vent only. They have different fantastic fans. This is the low end. Um, it pulls, it draws air up, but it doesn't actually pull it in from outside. So it's the fantastic vent and it was like $114 on Amazon with free shipping. So the fantastic fan comes with a lot of extra features. And if that's important to you, you can get one with remote control, a uh, rain sensor that drops the lid if it starts raining. You can get one that'll change direction so you can either draw air out from the inside of the van or blow air down from the top. In this case, we're just going to start off with a basic model. It's within Dawn's budget and so let's go ahead and get started. And where, where would you find something like that? It was at Amazon? It was at Amazon. Amazon, okay. 90% of the things that I purchase are on Amazon because I've got the Prime membership, I love the free shipping. Uh, there's use, there's a lot of links, like on, on your uh, website, for instance, or on your blog site. EnigmaticNomadic.com, go there yep. and click on any of the Amazon products and buy what you need, even if it's yeah. not that product. And uh, that helps support the channel, so we appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, good enough. Let's go ahead and get started by figuring out exactly where we're gonna put this. Okay, All right, good. let's do it. So when you open the box, you're gonna get the bottom bracket that comes in from the bottom and your manual and this is what the fan looks like right out of the box nice uh, smoked tinted cover for the top and it's a three-speed fan so I think there's a control on the reverse side I like it All right here I think that's how you and it, this one's manually you have to crank it open manually so you know, you crank it open manually and it's just that many fewer things to fail, so that's no problem. Right, plus I can reach it from my bed, so I'm good with so that. It's going to be in good shape. Just want to know where the hinges are, because the hinges always go to the front. That way, if the fan's open and you drive, the, the lid doesn't cup the wind as you drive. So we want to keep it aerodynamics. We want to keep our hinge in the front. So let's go ahead and, and uh, take a look at where we're going to mount this. We mount this this way. Okay. Then the holes, the hole that we uh, create for it has to be just enough for this to sit down on it. So this is basically our template plus an eighth of an inch all the way around. See what I'm okay, saying? Okay, right. So, so, so we'll use this as our template. Now look, we've got a ceiling here and I can easily see that with the, the dome lights, there's wiring going in here. And there's a chance we might get into that wiring. We're just going to hedge our bets and uh, use pilot bits and mark it as best we can and be real careful about how we make the cut. But it's not enough to scare you. If we do end up getting into a wire, we can always uh, patch it back together with some butt splice connectors. And if uh, that happens, we'll go ahead and show you an example of how to do that. But for now, let's go ahead and take our measurements so we have get a, a nice symmetric uh, hole in the ceiling and in the roof to mount this fan. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure the bracket. By doing that, I get, I'm coming to 13 and a half, so half of 13 and a half is going to be six Seven and, a quarter? and three quarters. What is it? Six and three quarters? Six and three quarters, yeah. And I'm going to measure off six and three quarters, which is right here. Every time I hear something drop out of my toolbox, it makes it that much lighter. <laughs> so I'm digging it. Six and three quarters is here and now let's take some measurements on and it doesn't look like there's a front and back to this and if I go here it's about 13 and a half if I go here it's 
about 13 and a half. I think that's what our hole's going to be is 13 and a half. So now I'm going to measure this way. You need some help, Hollis. All right, man. Thanks. Okay. Right there. So that's our. We should middle. probably line up with the center of those two lights right there. Pretty good. Does it look like it's on? Yeah, it looks pretty close. Let awesome. me let me do 25 and a half from the other side and see if it comes out to the same. Sounds good. So, do we want to put it right here? Yeah, I think so. Tell me if I'm mark. Is that my mark? Yeah, you're on your mark. Right there. Okay, so if I do that and then I do this, it looks like I'm square with these lights. Let's mark it on the outside because we want to. Oh. We, we're going to actually have a, probably an eighth between a sixteenth and an eighth. Okay. Extra. Nice. So when we're cutting into ceiling material like this. What's most likely to happen is we're going to grab it and pull it. Yeah. It's so in order to not grab it and pull it, I'm going to start with a razor knife. So let's go ahead and do okay. that now. Finally, I get to lay down. I know, it's hard to get up, I'm sure. I know. Don't give me too much credit. We're just starting the job. Okay. All right, I'll save There's the There's a lot of little sand traps to come still. Okay. So the okay. next thing that we want to do is we're going to go up on the roof and cut a hole, but we want to make sure that where we cut from the roof down matches with from the bottom up. And the best way to do that is to use a pilot bit. And by pilot bit, I'm talking about something like this. This is a 3 8 inch foot long bit and I'm just gonna drill up as straight as I can in all four corners and that'll give us four holes at the top that we'll mark with our sharpie and that way we know how to cut it with the angle grinder to make this line up as, as well as we can now it may not be perfect but we've got some tools to address that when we get to it so let's go ahead and drill with our pilot bit now so it looks like I'm going straight all right nope what do you want you need to come to your there you are. You're pretty good right That's there. Good. Yeah, go straight. Okay, up. when I drill this, I'm just gonna do little short bursts. I'm not gonna hit the trigger and hold it the whole time. And that way, if I come up to a wire, I can navigate around it with the tip of the bit. Just a quick little burst. Wow. All right, no turning back. Okay. And then our last one. So let's go ahead and get ourselves set up to make the cut in the roof because I'm probably going to cut from the roof down mm -hmm. rather than from the, I could come from here up. I just don't want what, sawdust in my eyes. You? The next step, now that we've got our, our uh, hole cut, the beginning of our hole cut underneath, is I'm going to go ahead and make the cut on the roof. And to do that, I'm going to use an angle grinder with a metal cutting blade on it. I bought this angle grinder at a big box hardware store. I think it was $24.99. It's three and a half amps. Be careful when you buy these blades because the metal cutting blades and the concrete cutting blades look almost identical. So you just want to look at the labeling on it to make sure that you have a metal cutting blade. Another thing that makes it nice is if you have a framing square, that way we can use this to make sure that our hole is square and put as many things in our favor to uh, make sure that we get a good cut. Be careful when you're getting up on these uh, rooftops too because putting your weight on here, you can create a little dimple in the metal. So we just wanna be careful about how we go about that. Okay, so with my, my uh, marks, where I'm gonna make the cut, there's nothing left to do but to make the cut, so let's do it. All right, I'll get the switch. Let's put a, hand me that uh, plywood there, and that way we spread our, my weight out over the surface.
Alright, let's see what we got here. All the way through. There you go. It's gonna be hot. I bet you that that same, that's the same piece of wood that we just saw. And if that is the same piece of wood we just saw, then I know there's not any wires in the way, so we might get out of this job scot-free. Okay, let's see. Blade off. It just chewed right through it. There's a couple of struts in here. Okay, so my blade needed to be changed. What happens is these will wear down over time. And so I'm going to switch it to this new blade. So this is a four and a half inch metal cutting blade. Metal cut off right here, it says it. So I know I've got the right blade. Your angle grinder will come with a handle with a tool in it that changes the blade. It's a good idea to unplug it just in case you hit the trigger by mistake while you're handling the blade. I stick my key in here and I press a button on top to lock it. Spin that off. Spin the new one on. the button right. I'll probably come back with the grinding wheel after I make the cuts with the hole basically cut where we want it I'm gonna switch over to the grinding blade and clean up the cuts a little bit and take the burrs off and make it a little smoother but before I do that I'm gonna switch over to a different cutting tool that I'll show you now this cutting tool here you can pick up at just about any hardware store and it gives me the ability to make a cut where we're going to need it without having to sink a skill saw down inside the, the depression that we have. I have a lot of control to make nice straight corners but before I start to use this tool I want to look at the blade that I've got on it and this blade has a lot of fine teeth. Well this blade's for fine cutting and we're not doing fine cutting we're doing rough cutting so I'm going to switch over to a better blade. I don't know how to use your tools. With the right blade on, I'm going to go ahead and, and make my cut onto the plywood that's in between the ceiling and the roof. makes a big difference. This went really easy because I had the right tool. If I didn't have something like this, I could have made the cut with a sawzall. And the way I would have done that is I would have started in a corner with a drill bit and made a place for my drill, for my sawzall blade to start. And then I would have just worked around with the sawzall. It's a little harder to handle and not as easy to use to make accurate cuts. So I'm really fortunate to have the right tool in this case. But if all you've got is a sawzall, that's no excuse not to do the job.
Yep. Can you come around and hand me the fan from the outside? I want to see if it fits. And if it fits, I'm going to clean these edges up. And then we're going to get all the dust off the roof and start to prep it for the butyl tape and die core. Okay, we just want to make sure that this is going to work. I've been getting So we got it this way. What we don't have is this way. I think it's this corner and this corner. So I'm gonna clean this one up. Now you're gonna start getting debris down there, so be careful. So let's go ahead, if you guys can just clear the area, I'm gonna get all this dust off of here. Okay. So we're gonna prep the area for the uh, butyl tape and uh, die core, so I wanna make sure that all this dust is gone. So the next step that we're gonna take is, we're about ready to put the butyl tape down in the die core, but before we do that, we need to know how these wires are gonna be because we don't want the fan in place without thinking about where the wires are gonna go. So before we clean this area up and prep it for the fan to sit down in it, let's go down and figure out how we're gonna run these wires. And, and this is the time where we decide where the house batteries are gonna go. And where the house batteries go needs to make sense to where the panels are gonna go. And the panels are gonna go forward of the, of the fan, right? You're gonna probably put a couple of panels here over time. Solar panels? Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna wanna come in, this is what I'm thinking. If you, <clears throat> if you put your panels here, you're gonna wanna come in on one of these sides. Right. And then pick up your battery. Okay. So and if I wanted to choose a side that my battery had to be on, yeah. if it was going to be somewhere in this area, I would choose this side because if I change the configuration of this fan at some point in the future, this will be a kitchen area and I'll have cabinets and I could put the battery. What if we put the battery in the back? That's fine. What if I ran the, the, the wires to the back? That'd be even better. That would right. be ideal actually. All right. So if you could shake this out for me, I'm going to go get some okay. stuff and I'm going to figure out how we're going to run the wires. Do you have any wire? No, I don't. Okay, let me see what I got. Come on, Sam, okay. let's go. So this is what I'm thinking. We take our cutter knife and we slit it right there and we run this tucked in and then come in the slit and come out right there. Yeah, works for me. Let's do it. Yeah. So let's do that. This is what see I'm going to do. See if it'll slide down it, here. We can't get it past Your this car. seam. So I'm going to take it to right here and then we're going to tuck it in around from there. Put a little bit of a bend on it. Might be easier coming from the other way. Oh. Can come down through this cavity. Huh? <laughs> you mind uh, wiring this from the inside while I'm putting the. Yeah, I got Top it, on? I got the wire down to here. Excellent. Huh? You mind wiring this on the inside while I'm uh, putting the, the stuff on on the outside? Yeah, okay. Okay. 
So, and I can give you butt splice connectors and I can give you everything that you need. But that way we can just have a guy in the inside and a guy on the outside at the same time. All right, awesome. Yep. Is this enough? <laughs> you mind donating I'm what's donating left to the next left. one? Thank yep. you. I heard people were coming up short, so. Yeah, so thanks for doing that. Yeah. So we're just gonna go black to black, white to white, so it's absolutely clear when it's time to wire it. Going fast. Do you have any yeah. heavy gauge string here? What would you like? Heavy gauge string. Oh, really? I have some twine. Let me think about it. Oh, Not really? twine, uh, nylon rope. Yeah, how big? Uh, not big. Like. Yeah. So let me see. Yeah. Where I thought it was. So not gonna stop. <coughs> Yeah, I got to make sure. I do. I found it. All right, so we're ready to tuck this these wires in and uh set the fan down so before we set the fan down we've got to prep this area and before I tuck the wires in I, I'm pretty happy with the way the butt splice connectors went on but just as an extra measure I'm gonna wrap it with some electrical tape so if we pull and jerk on it and stuff we don't get everything in place and somehow something got pulled loose so all the stress that we put on these wires is going to be down here instead of at our contact points that we connected I'm a big fan of cutting tape instead of pulling it and having it not really adhere all the way at the end. So we're going to prep the area with some isopropyl alcohol. You can get it anywhere. We're going to clean the area and get it ready. And then the next step is to put our butyl tape down. And that's what this is. This is butyl tape. So we're just going to run a seam right along the edge. If you want to overlap it, I ain't mad at you. Go ahead and overlap it. But that's fine. Now we're going to put some Dicor caulking down or sealant down on top of this but because we have these ridges I'm gonna put a couple of extra little pieces of the butyl tape over that just to build it up a little bit since we have it we might as well take advantage of it this stuff is really good to prevent leaks It helps that we're not doing this in the snow. This stuff would be really hard <laughs> to bend how you want it, you know? Uh-huh. We'd have to go in a garage or heat it up yeah, or probably, something. Yeah. Okay, so this is a, a caulk dispenser, and we're gonna use our Dyco brand lap sealant, self-leveling. This is four roofs. Because we wanna put as many things in our favor as we can to ensure that we're gonna get a tight seal with no moisture problems. So the way that this works is, this is a caulk dispenser, and it already has everything that you need on it to be able to operate this tube of caulk. Now, we've gotta cut the tip of it off, and then there's a little membrane down inside that we need to pierce. So everything on this caulk gun's got that on it. Right here's a hole, so I stick my tip through there, and squeeze it. You can use a razor knife too, but that's what that's for. And then there's a little pin at the bottom, and I'm going to use that. And I'm going to stab it a bunch of times. Is that your baby in there? 
And then depress the button right here and pull back. She's a little bit shy. Yeah, she didn't really shy away from me. Put that in. And now let's apply some of our uh, Dicor lap sealant on. <laughs> Press this button and pull it back a little bit so it doesn't keep coming out. Now let's set our let's set our fan down. And I'm just going to take care to tuck these wires in as we go, and to keep the die core off the nice new fan. What's going on here? You like it? Sure. Okay. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to drive some right self-tapping right sheet metal screws into these holes and fasten this thing down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk these screws all the way around, but rather than start in one corner and go in a straight line, by the time I get over to this end, the fan will be popping a wheelie. So I'm going to put screws in the four corners, kind of like when you tighten the lug nuts on a tire, so it all goes down evenly and squeezes that die core out nice and even around the outside. And not try to push too hard and force them through. Gotcha. That's as far as it goes. That's all Does I need. Work? Yep. With all the screws in, we're basically done on the top, but if we have a little of this die core left, it's not gonna hurt a thing to go back over the top of these <laughs> screws, and so I'm just gonna use up what we've got doing that. That way and some of them are down that way. It doesn't hurt a thing just to go ahead and use up what you have. All right, so it looks like we're done up top, so I'm gonna grab the tools and materials that I have, and we'll finish by putting that flange in from the bottom and screwing that in, and we're just about done with the job. I just wish that my arms were longer. I gotta cut this probably. Is this too long? Yeah, I gotta cut it. But that's okay. Okay, so we've got the flange pushed all the way up tight, and that tells us where to make our mark for our cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my Sharpie, and I'm gonna make my mark, and then we'll cut the flange, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. I think you're really gonna like it. Let's leave my mark here. Something like that. Oh, I, yeah. I bet yep. you those Smirnoffs are cold. You want a Smirnoff, Danny? I know, I know. All right, man. All right, we've got our line, and that tells us how much we're cutting off. Okay, normally I would go ahead and cut this flange with the metal cutting disc on my on my disc grinder that we used before, but I used so much of that disc cutting the metal that it wore down to a nub and I don't have a backup on me, which is a good opportunity for me to show you another way to cut it. You can take a finishing wood blade on your circular saw and turn it around backwards and cut this just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. How are we doing in there? Good. Well, is that metal? Because it looks plastic. Kind of metal got. Pardon me? I have the saw that will eat, eat metal. So what do you do when you cut the flange with the bit turned, the blade turned around backwards and you're done cutting it? What do you do? You turn the blade back around because when you put it in the tool pile and wake up the next day, you're going to forget it was backwards. I Trust me, I promise you'll forget it's backwards. So we're going to turn it right back around when we're done. All right, so you got that. And then. Ooh. Are we in? Well, it's gonna, there you go. Got it? Mm -hmm. Good. 
good. We're getting into that sealing material, so I'm gonna go backwards a little bit to break it loose. So I'm gonna start on reverse so I can mess with this material a little bit so it doesn't grab it and pull it. Okay, so that's good. Oh, hold it up. We're done, right? Yeah, just need a battery to test it. Well, she's got a battery over here. Do you want to bring it back there and test it? Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go. <laughs> you helping, Nikki? Do you have uh, nuts that go on this? Don, do you have the nuts that came with this uh, battery? It didn't come with any. What? No. Um, Should have had a couple nuts. I might have some nuts that'll fit that. Really, I just want to see a demonstration and then I'll wait and have that battery charged up. And uh, you say that now until you get <laughs> hot and you're like, I got this fantastic fan. Right. I can't resist I using it. Just a couple of volts. Exactly. <laughs> or amps. All right, let's see. If I go here and test it, I'll tell you where you're at. Okay. Do you know much about batteries? I know some. Okay, so 12.5. Is that the lowest you want to go? Is, is 50%. Okay. And we are at 12.64, 12.65. So this is a battery that's in good condition. If I can, if I can get that voltmeter over there to work, I'll give it to you and you can give it back to me when I see you. I'll get a voltmeter. I actually have one at home and I just didn't bring it with me. Okay, why don't we have power? Oh, it can't work unless it's up. Oh. It won't work unless it's up. Okay. It's a fail safe. Good to know. Come sit up here and feel this. All right. But I can feel what do you air think? movement right here. It almost feels like a fan and yet it's a vent, but it feels like a fan if you get right there. Yeah. And that's all I need is for, I like the sound, the white noise, and air to move in here. And I'm, and I'm good. Well. So it's got three speeds. You got three speeds. And uh, nice. And what was this for? That's fuse. Oh, that's the fuse, okay. Yep. Excellent. Well, give me a hug. All right, man, you deserve more than a hug. Well. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and, and Danny back here Danny, pitched in thank quite a bit. You. you got me hooked up. So there you have it. In probably right. about three and a half hours, maybe three hours, a while. we were able to install a fantastic fan with just a few simple tools that you could buy at any hardware store that won't break the bank. And now Dawn has a way to create ventilation whenever she wants. And so that's yeah. just a 12 volt system. Hopefully this helps you guys when you see this to not be intimidated about cutting into your roof. Just make, make sure you use that butyl tape and the Dicor sealant and that you do what we said about hitting the corners first and walking it around and sucking that down. And there's really not a whole lot that can go wrong as long as you just take your time and, and you don't get too excited in the middle of it and get frustrated. It's a pretty simple install. So hopefully that helps you out. Thanks a lot. And if you like the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel and share it with a friend that you think might want to install a fantastic fan. Thanks a lot. See ya. You should take just screenshots of these and make a calendar. You know how they have those men's <laughs> calendars. Right? Yeah. November. Fantastic fan. Okay, there you go. Put that down. Now I got a really nice uh, view of your ass. <laughs> All right, just another picture for the calendar. Yep. Hey, the big calendar. <laughs> but you told me it was going to be a we, we have to do something for the lady viewers. I am the lady. How are you doing? Now that's a smile for the calendar.
Yeah, yeah you're close. <laughs> Hit me, baby. Thank you. <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs>